Welcome everybody, I'm hi C and this is Toku Rev, your introduction to tokusatsu movie and TV shows so you can decide what you want to spend your time watching. This is my first jump into the Ultra series with Ultra 7X. Ultra 7X is the 23rd entry in the Ultra series. It is, at least in theory, a revival of the classic 1967 series Ultra 7, airing in October of 2007 and ending in December of that same year with 12 episodes. Welcome to the city of, uh, we'll just call this one Future City. You could describe it as dark, smoky, and neon, where giant heads on floating billboards have way too many opinions about your health, and the sale of Matrix-style trench coats are way, way up. Oh, and aliens are around. You know, sometimes. Future City is protected by a top-secret detective organization called Dias. Dias is a special alien investigation team tasked with protecting the Earth from aggressive aliens. Agents live their lives like any normal person, but they can be called on at any time and pushed into action. Addressing each other only by code names, singular letters of the alphabet, following the orders of the Dias commander. Agents are equipped with a small laser weapon called the Ultra Gun, and a video siever, or VC for short, serving as their main means of communications with each other and Dias. <laughs> One agent of Dias, our protagonist, Jin, is first seen floating lifelessly in a body of water, waking up with amnesia in a white room with a mysterious woman. She cryptically informs Jin that he is the one who must save the world. He's handed the Ultra Eye. Confused, Jin begins to piece together the world he lives in and discovers the secrets of his role in Dias while taking on missions to stop alien invasions. <laughs> Jin is a bit bland. He does well to serve as the viewer's introduction to the world and be a surrogate for information, but you never feel like there's anything at stake with Jin. He explores the world, taking on tasks assigned to him from Dias and stopping alien plans. He's always seen in a trench coat and a black glittery shirt. His only defining personality trait is serious. He's on a search to discover who he was, but the personality of who that was is never explored. Everything about Jin is bland and repetitive, never showing any emotions or aspirations outside of his one goal. When Jin comes face to face with aliens, he sometimes uses the Ultra Eye to transform into Ultra 7. Ultra 7's design is very similar to the previous incarnations of Ultra 7 from the 70s. I like the look of the design, but I find the suit bends too much around the arms and sides. It doesn't look like it fits the actor underneath. It's not offensive, but it does feel a little bit uninspired. Ultra 7 has a handful of attacks at his disposal, like the Eye Slugger, a boomerang that sits on Ultra 7's head and swings like a blade. Or the Amirium Beam, a beam that can be cast from the lamp on Ultra 7's forehead. And his last attack, the Wide Shot, Ultra 7's most powerful attack, a large thick beam that can attack multiple targets. Ultra 7 feels powerful and destroys all aliens with ease. But weirdly, in a show called Ultra 7X, you rarely see Ultra 7. He averages around two minutes of screen time each episode. And a few episodes, Jin never transforms. There are also no transformation sequences. The best you get is Jin holding up the Ultra Eye, followed by quick camera cuts, coming back to a completely transformed Ultra 7. It's just really odd. In order to solve cases, Jin needs to team up with other DS agents. We are first introduced to Agent K, K is a lot more cocky than Jin is, showing a large interest in the ladies and commonly boasting about himself. He makes a good partner for the lack of Jin's personality. With K's excellent marksmanship, Jin and K are usually teamed together for missions. When it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, they make a team that is really hard to beat. 
Some of their collaborative fight scenes are my favorite action scenes throughout this series. But Agent K is very loyal to his position with Diaz. It takes a lot for him to disobey a Diaz order. The second agent we are introduced to is Agent S. A known lover of chocolate and infiltration. She's a master of going undercover, wearing disguises, and can best both Jin and Agent K at hand-to-hand -hand combat. She's sneaky and headstrong. Out of all the characters in Ultra 7X, Agent S has to be my favorite. She's usually the one in charge of the plans, taking control of Jin and K. She has a moral compass and is not a slave to Diaz in the same way that K is. She hesitates to follow blindly and speaks up when something seems off the level. If I had a chance to rework the show, I would make S the main protagonist. Diaz agents are fighting aggressive aliens who are plotting to take over the world. Through the 12 episodes, you discover a few different tactics the aliens are using to make their invasions happen. The problem is, you're never really shown who the alien threat is. Every episode, the team comes up against different aliens, and sometimes you learn more about the overarching plan, but there's never a real identified enemy. I find the monster designs range from really interesting to run-of-the-mill monster of the week stuff. While I really love the design of the Vario aliens, who look like evil marionettes and blow out people's eardrums with sonic frequencies, I could probably do without another giant cockroach alien. None of the aliens are ever a match for a transformed Ultra 7, so even the best ones don't feel threatening. I have two feelings on the action scene. I think the look of the hand-to-hand -hand combat is really cool. The scenes are choreographed well and are exciting. But unfortunately, the transformed Ultra 7 fight scenes are boring. Usually, it's Ultra 7 on one side of the screen and the Monster of the Week on the other. They usually just throw a few projectiles at each other and then the fight's done. It never feels like a competition or a battle. Let's talk production. I don't understand it. From what I've read, this was the first Ultra series to be produced for an adult audience in mind. So that explains some of the darker overtones in the series. But that doesn't explain the darkness in the actual frames. Maybe Ultra 7X was just a victim of early HD cameras, but this show is hard to look at. The dynamic color range is extremely muted. Nothing pops. Everything's bathed in a blue color grade. Making it worse is that there is this foggy, blurry filter on every shot. The entire time I'm watching an episode, I just want to rub my eyes or scrub my screen because it feels like it's dirty. Everything feels hazy. If I had to make a guess, I would say they were going for a dream effect, but that effect does not enhance anything. Coupled with the muted color palette, this is a really ugly show. Ultra 7X is only 12 episodes long. Out of all the shows that have been on Toku Rev so far, this is the shortest, so you'd think they would put a lot of information into each of these episodes. They do not. During the first episode, I felt like I was watching an art film from a first-year art student. Long shots of Jin floating in the water with nothing but ambient sound effects. Lines of dialogue that just feel out of place, like you're stuck in a nightmare. Camera shots that hold on for way too long and give little to no information. Most of the time, I'm trying to figure out what the show wants me to know from what I'm seeing. Sometimes it feels like they got a hold of a video camera, went to their friend's convenience store, and turned it into an episode with no editing. It does nothing to pull me in as a viewer. And the soundtrack. Appropriate industrial chugging guitars. This sounds like a Hot Topic dream come true. But even in what are supposed to be emotional dialogue or somber tones, you still have this chugging electric guitar in your ear. It fits the neon matrix aesthetic that the show establishes, but it definitely needed a few more tracks for different types of scenes. But I have to confess to my soft spot for the metalcore closing track, Another Day Comes, by Pay Money to My Pain. So, can I recommend Ultra 7X? If you've been paying attention, the answer is no, I can't. 
I take no pleasure in ripping things apart on Toku Rev. I want this series to serve as a way to help those new to Toku find their new favorite show. I can't think of the viewer that Ultra 7X would be made for. It's bad for adults and terrible for kids. In the 12 episodes, a plot barely ever shows up. I'm a sucker for futurism and science fiction dystopian cities. And Ultra 7X has that in spades. But even with that love, waiting around to find the plot is excruciating. It gives you little to nothing and then dumps everything on you in the end. It has no sense of pacing. Most of the episodes are just forgettable. The only time I felt truly invested was in episode nine, Red Moon. The entire episode is an homage to Hitchcock's Psycho, but even that is a lukewarm recommendation. The biggest sin is that this series is supposed to be an anniversary series to Ultra 7. The way the show feels, I have to assume that it did not start out as an Ultra show. It was probably a sci-fi Blade Runner styled cop drama that couldn't get greenlit, so they threw Ultra 7 to get it made. The show feels like it's embarrassed to even have Ultra 7 in it. Throughout the 12 episodes, you'd be lucky if there's an entire five minutes of Ultra 7 on screen. So it's an Ultra show. That's embarrassed to be an Ultra show. The only way I can suggest anyone to take on Ultra 7X is through curiosity of what a bad toku show looks like. Ultra 7 deserves better than what's given here. When I first started the series, there were a lot of elements I really liked. I wanted to explore this future world with its mysterious agents. And buried deep down, there's probably a really cool show here. But from what we got, I just can't recommend it. Thank you for watching. This has been another episode of Toku Rev Ultra 7X. Previously, it was Metalder from the Metal Hero series. And next time, we'll be looking into the start of the Garo series. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe for more Toku introductions to help you find what your next favorite show is.